Ashwa, what? If you have not heard about ashwagandha, please allow me to introduce you to this magical herb. Welcome back to our channel, Ink Nutrition, where we're all about mind, body, and food. My name is Jack, registered dietitian, your friendly neighborhood nutrition nerd. If you haven't been here before, welcome. Get cozy, grab a chair, grab a coffee. Let's talk about nutrition. So we talk about a lot of things on this channel, of course, always nutrition related, always evidence based. And today we're going to tap into a new world, herbs. And I know herbal medicine sometimes gets, you know, a rough reputation from those wary Western white coat wearing doctors, but the reality is herbs are legit. The power of herbs is real. You just have to know which ones to take, where to find them, where to source them. So we're gonna get into an awesome herb, truly an amazing one. It's called ashwagandha. I know that probably sounds a little woo woo, right? Now ashwagandha is derived from the word ashwa, which means horse, and then ganda, which can mean fragrance. Now I promise you won't smell like a horse when you have ashwagandha. It's thought that when you have ashwagandha, historically it would give you power similar to a horse, and then it can smell a certain way, the root can, so they're, they're separate, okay? But diving a little bit more into the history, uh, it has been used for over 3,000 years in Ayurvedic medicine for a load of potential benefits, and it's now just starting to get popular in the Western world, and you're gonna start seeing it all over the place, honestly. Uh, so it's important to know about it, what it can do. So I'm sure most of us are familiar with at least some herbs, right? The culinary varieties like rosemary, oregano, basil, which also have some medicinal properties, but ashwagandha is in a class of its own. It's categorized as an adaptogenic herb, which essentially means that it allows your body to adapt to both physiological and psychological stressors. So what does that really mean? It essentially means when you take it, it helps you where your body and mind needs to be helped. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but I'm telling you, adaptogenic herbs are very, very real. They can be extremely beneficial when taken correctly over time and they're very safe, they're non-toxic. Now, ashwagandha has been studied quite a bit for its potential benefits with cognition, fatigue, sleep, and definitely stress and anxiety. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to be a quick fix option, but it can definitely help, or it looks like it can. So when it comes to stress and anxiety, which are the major you know, outcomes that I wanna focus on, for this video anyways, how does it really work? How would ashwagandha truly help you feel less stressed? Well, it appears that these withanalyzed, these compounds within this herb act on the hypothalamic pituitary axis, the HPA axis, which is responsible for the release of a lot of hormones that make us just feel good. But to put more simply, ashwagandha just kind of has this normalizing effect on the body similar to a thermostat, right? It can sense and respond to temperature, okay? Just to kind of get it back to that set point. So I like to say it doesn't get you too high with the highs or too low with the lows. It helps you stay middle. It's very calming, but it ultimately helps you where you need it. So it sounds good, but is it really good? Let's of course look at the literature, all right? I'm gonna highlight a meta-analysis, and if you don't know, a meta-analysis is kind of the gold standard, if you will, when it comes to research. It compiles all the available data, all the available studies and trials on a specific topic, and this one was done by Dr. Lopresti and his colleagues recently, and he looked at how ashwagandha affects human health, okay, when it comes to both mental and physical outcomes. And the results were positive. They eventually concluded that there is a wide application for the use of ashwagandha, but probably most notably was for its effect on stress and anxiety. And the results are statistically significant. Now, I do wanna point out that uh, I was also involved in some clinical research with ashwagandha at University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, and we looked at the effect 
of ashwagandha on stress, sleep, and food cravings in college students, which was pretty novel. And there were really positive results there as well. This was a double blind, randomly controlled trial. We looked at 60 subjects, we followed them for a month. And overall, there were positive outcomes related to all three of those outcomes of stress, sleep, and food cravings. So all in all, you know, I really do love this herb and I, I want to clear the air. There's no conflicts of interest here about, you know, this research. I'm not trying to promote my own. I'm just here to let people know, inform them of this herb, of this whole class of adaptogenic herbs. There's several other adaptogens too. Ashwagandha just seems to have the most research supporting its benefits. So how do you have ashwagandha in what form? So you could have it in a tea, all right? This could be a little bit harder to find. You might have to go to your local apothecary to find ashwagandha root, steep it in hot water, and get some great benefits there. But probably a more effective and easier way to do it, if you just want the benefits of an adaptogen, is to have it in a capsule form. Now you wanna make sure that you get a full spectrum root extract that's what it should say on the label and the recommended dose is 700 milligrams a day divided up into two capsules a day now there are some benefits that you can see from having as little as 200 milligrams a day but i think that max dose of 700 is not only gonna benefit you more but it's also very safe but speaking of safety, even though this is a safe non-toxic herb, you should not have it unless you speak to your healthcare provider. And there are some possible contraindications, okay? So if you are sensitive to nightshade vegetables, are pregnant, uh, have low blood pressure or diabetes, then I would not recommend this. But again, talk to your healthcare provider if you are interested. And keep in mind, just like other dietary supplements, not all herbal supplements are created the same, so you have to be very picky of where you get them and really do your research on the companies. Make sure that they really do their due diligence when it comes to safety and efficacy of their products. If you want any recommendations specifically, definitely reach out and I'll let you know. Now, I'm not here to tell you that ashwagandha is the magic cure-all fixer elixir for everything. But it's pretty good and as it stands right now the research is promising when it comes to primarily the benefits with stress anxiety and sleep so there you have it thank you very much for tuning in for watching if you have any questions about ashwagandha about nutrition about herbs let me know drop it in the comment below please like please subscribe for new videos every wednesday thanks again my name is Jack again, a registered dietitian with Ink Nutrition, and I will see you next time. Bye. But the real power of ashwagandha... Now, I also want to point out just the... Uh... Now, I do want to point out the... Bet... Ashwagandha, also known as Indian ginseng, winter cherry, or withania somnifera. That is going to confuse you. Adoptogens have synergistic superpowers. Everybody be afraid of herbs, but over half of all prescription drugs in this country come from plants. A lot of those come from herbs, and this is a tangent that I probably shouldn't include. <laughs> da, ashwagandha.